is America the odd one out? Well, this is what we're gonna talk about today. And how did I come up with this topic? Because I've done years of videos on the differences between the US and New Zealand. And so many times people from around the world are saying, New Zealand is just like my country. America seems the one that's a little bit different. And so I dove in and I just kind of highlight all of the different areas that I've talked about in the past, of which America seems to be the odd one out. I've come up with 12 ways and things that they do that are different than everybody else. So you're not gonna to miss it. Here we go. We are a family of six that have moved from the US to New Zealand and have been in New Zealand for eight years now. And on this channel, we just share that journey. I have created a free masterclass for anybody who's thinking about moving abroad, moving to New Zealand. It literally covers everything you need to know. And so you might wanna check that out in the description if that's helpful to you. Otherwise, I'm excited that you're here and you're not gonna to wanna to miss this episode and especially the things near the end. Here we go. Okay, number one, we have to start with the units of measurement, okay? Most of the developed world uses the metric system. The US uses the imperial system. There's only two other countries in the world that use the imperial system, that's Miramar and Liberia, okay? That's it. Everybody else is on the metric system, so what? Why is this? Why <laughs> is America the odd one out? I don't know, you tell me. All right, and number two, let's talk the tipping culture, okay? Tipping in the US is next level compared to other places. Now there's other countries that you do tip, but it's not the same. And the US has gotten worse over time. Like it's crazy. I was there just a couple of months ago and it was just everywhere you had to tip. Everywhere they're asking for a tip. It was like, oh my goodness, you didn't even do anything. I came in, I ordered the food, you made it. I came in to pick it up. I drove over there and you're still charged asking for it. Flip the screen, give us a tip. One place I was at a concert, they handed me a water bottle, they flipped the screen and wanted a tip. It's like the tipping is out of control. And it's like so a part of the culture. And in fact, just so you know, if you're in the US, that stresses everybody else out. Coming there like, I don't know how to tip, what am I gonna do? Luckily with technology, they kind of make it easy. Like if you wanna give this much, add this, you know what I mean? like to do the math for you. And so that's a lot easier. Obviously we have a calculator on our phone anyway, but like the tipping culture is just, it's so different. And so, especially in restaurants, you know, because they, you're very much expected to tip no matter what, because of, you know, they get a little rate wage anyway. And so people just like, it's like, this is like a whole new concept. You guys, if you're in the US, you might not realize that this is not normal everywhere. Okay, you know, people pay an actual living wage to wait staff, okay? And they don't expect everything to be about the tips. Now, one good thing about the tips in restaurants in the US is that you get really good service, like almost to the point where it's annoying. Can I get you anything else? Can I get you this? Can I fill this? Can I give you another refill? You know, just like, just stop. I'm trying to have a conversation. Do you guys feel that way? Anyway, my point is tipping culture. Not the same around the world. America is the odd one out. And number three, let's talk sports, okay? The most popular sport in the world, football. But America calls it soccer. <laughs> Why? I tried to do just a little bit of research on that. Wasn't getting many, that didn't sound right anyway. So if you know why America calls it soccer, please comment below. But first of all, it's just not that big of a sport in the US. I mean, it is but it's not the same as it is around the world, as we've seen with the different shows like Wrexham or, you know, opening our eyes with the Beckham series recently, like it just like what's going on and like how much of a culture it is in Europe um, and other parts of the world. And it's just, it's the biggest sport in the world. And we decided to change the name. And then we have a sport called American football that nobody else, and that's our biggest sport. That's the US biggest sport and nobody else really plays it. There's different versions of it, but <laughs> it's just so funny. I love American football. So don't think anything Packer fan here if you're a Packer fan, but just know that, you know, it's the biggest sport there and it's just not that big as big in the US. You know, I would say American football is the biggest one, probably basketball after that. I don't know the big, you know, NBA, NFL teams, that's what matters. So interesting sports. Okay, number four, we need to talk about spelling differences. So there's American English 
and then there's British English. So if you go onto your keyboard or your phone's keyboard and you wanna choose which language, there's gonna be American English and then there's the British English. And I thought, okay, so the British English. And so that's used, but it's used in all the Commonwealth. So you got, you know, England and Australia and New Zealand and Canada. And like, these are big countries and they all use different spellings. And then the American version is, why is that? I didn't do any research on it, so if you know, let me know. <laughs> but like, why is that? And like, they add so many U's and they take out, you know, the Z instead of the S, the S, the whatever. Let me tell you, I have been here for eight years and I keep doing it wrong. Most people are quite forgiving of me considering I write a lot. I'm a professor by trade. And they're just like, oh, she's American. That's why she keeps using that. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. You know, you try to adjust, but like, it's hard. So like, why? Why are we like spelling things differently around the world? Number five, can we please talk about this? This should have been number one. Not sure what I was thinking. The date format. What does that mean? It means when you're writing the date. So today is, I don't even know. Let's just say, the, I think it's the 22nd of October. So in the US, you would, pay, you would say October 22nd, you know, 2023. But anywhere else, a lot of other places, it'll be, you'd say the day first, then the month, so the 23rd of October, 2023. <sighs> if there's one thing that's really hard to change when you move away from the US, it's that. Not a big deal, but you don't realize how much you have to do it, how much your brain keeps going, wait a minute, which way am I writing this? And, you know, filling out forms and whether it's for the US, for New Zealand, I'm like, oh my gosh, the date. Or depending on, you know, like some of the dates, like you can't tell, like, are we talking about February? You know, like this, it's like the, the, you can't tell like what month or day it is depending on the numbers um, and how they line up. Like, are we talking about the second? Or are we talking about the seventh of, of February or something? And it's just like, what? I don't know why we're doing this. I don't know if it's part of like the revolutionary war where we just broke away from Britain and was like, hey, we're gonna do things different. We're gonna make it like this is us and we're different, I don't know. But why the date format difference? Does anybody know? Okay, number six, I have to say healthcare. We have to talk about healthcare. Most of the developed countries in the world have some sort of public health system. That's decent, okay? So that anybody can go in and get health services decent decently okay so many like i could just live so many countries but the u.s continues to run almost exclusively privately and so that drives up costs i mean there's different situations in different states where there's public services but like overall there's not a universal health system available for people when they get sick and this you guys have to understand that that's highly unusual compared to other places. So why we do that? I think it's just big business for the insurance companies, but not ideal for people really. And then, you know, it's just so expensive. Like even people that travel to the US know that they need to get travel insurance. I mean, excuse me, health insurance when they travel there because they know that if they were to get injured there, the cost would be outrageous because they don't have any public health services whereas when you travel to other places you don't have to worry about it you can get a little bit but then also because my kids have been traveling and living abroad and and we've been getting some health care and it's so funny because it's like if you want to apply for health care it's here's the application for all these countries and then here's the u.s one because it's different <laughs> because it's more expensive to get the u.s one because health care is more expensive and so the coverage they, they charge you is going to be more so. I could say a lot more about that, but I won't. Number seven, let's talk about university, higher education, getting degrees beyond high school. So expensive in the US. How does this still exist with everything changing, with the world kind of flattening out with the, the, <laughs> the age of the internet and how much you can learn on the internet? We're still paying $50,000 to go to a brick and mortar school that's probably not updated because the professors you know are maybe not keeping up with technology or you know maybe they are. i don't know but like seriously the amount it costs in the u.s is insane whereas a lot of developed countries will have it at such a reasonable cost sometimes it's free 
some science, you know, there's always systems because it's encouraged that people just continue education. It's a good thing for the people that live there, right? And so <laughs> it's just so interesting that like the way you have to understand like this whole idea of like applying for school and having to save your parents, having to save their whole life and getting scholarships that doesn't exist. Like in New Zealand, for example, if you graduate from year 13 here, you don't have to apply for college. You get automatic entrance into any university that you want to go to because if you have enough credits or whatever from year 13, that's it. And it's free for your first year. There is 0% interest on any loan that you do get. So there's no reason to really not take out a loan. And then, yeah, and it's really reasonable. So like a business degree is like $5,000. Like it's for a year, like it's, it doesn't even compare. And then I could just go into a lot of other countries, but that's just the one I know really well off the top of my head. And yeah, what are we doing with higher education? Okay, like I cannot continue without talking about number eight, vacation days, holiday time off. Do you realize, Americans, I'm speaking to you, do you realize that in a lot of the developed world, the government mandates that people get X amount of time off? Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, but for example, New Zealand, you give an automatic four weeks of paid time off, whether you're full-time, part-time, casual worker. Uh, I think you have to be there six months, maybe. Like, you have to put some time in, but like, what? Like... <laughs> The U.S. has none, no regulation, literally no regulation. There could be jobs out there where people are getting zero time off, you know, probably public holidays and then zero in addition to that. And the U.S. has the lowest number of public holidays. I mean, it's just like, you don't want to get time off. People are worked to death there. <laughs> and if you are American, you know that. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't realize how much other people have time off. In fact, as an American living in New Zealand for the last eight years, it feels like a lot of time off. I feel like I'm constantly getting a day off, like I, which can be a little bit frustrating because I love what I do. I run my own company. So I just, I'm just, I'm running, I'm doing stuff and I have to stop again, stop again, stop again, but it's good. It's good for my health. It's good for my mental health. It's good because I'm just a person that would keep running, <laughs> which, you know, it's just probably part of the culture that I grew up with and like what I value. And so, yeah, I mean, America gets things done. Let, well, let's not deny that, right? They like make things happen because they're just working probably harder than everybody else. Okay, number nine, we have to talk about maternity leave. The maternity leave in the US, like it's just so different compared to everybody else. Like it's so, <laughs> when you go to other countries, you realize how much time they have off. Like here, you can even, you can get a whole year. And I, I don't know if it's like, I don't know, it's a hundred percent compensation. I should have looked at it before I, about it um, <laughs> but it's a lot of it's a significant portion of their their income and then also their their spouse can do it it's just what you know in the u.s you get a couple weeks that's what it feels like and you gotta go back to work or you'll lose your job whereas in new zealand it's like they have to keep the same level of job maybe not your job because some jobs require that someone's in it right <laughs> for someone to be gone for a year doesn't really work but an equal level paying job when you decide to return um, and there's just so, I mean, I know that there's certain companies in the U.S. that have really good maternity rules, but like, it's not nationalized. It's not something that everybody gets. And like some people will just, you know, have to go back to their job like right away. And it's just amazing. Like I remember when I was in the U.S., I had a professor and I'm trying to remember what country she was from. And I went in to ask her a question. This was in grad school and she was so upset. She was crying, da 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 da. And she was about to have a baby and she was so upset, like, are you all right? So like, what's going on? And she just read the maternity rules. It's just that she came from another country and just assumed that it would be similar. But then when she looked that she doesn't really get that much time off. And like for her, like the value system that she has to want to be with her child and you know, like that precious time that you'll never get again. And <laughs> she gets like six weeks off and it was devastating for her it was unheard of like what like that seems so ridiculous and like she she has to work so she has to come back and yeah i just that always was imprinted in my mind i'm like wow like other cultures do it differently other cultures do it better what is going on in the u.s why do we not value women why do we not value 
um, families? Why do we not value that time with, with your children? And like, yeah, I don't know, like, whole thing too bad. Okay, number 10, we have to touch on gun laws. In the developed world, the US has, you know, because of the second amendment, relatively lenient gun laws compared to other people. Like, I mean, they're like, automatic weapons are outlawed in all of these countries. <laughs> <laughs> but the US, I mean, it's not like allowed, but it's the regulation is not very strict. Whereas like, if you look at the restrictions in all these other countries, it's quite strict for anything, you know, pa you know, other than a rifle or whatever that you would use for hunting. And so it's just, what the heck? Like we have more shootings in the US and we have the le most lenient gun laws. What does that say? Okay, number 11, we gotta say something about the temperature scales. So the US uses Fahrenheit and most of the rest of the world uses Celsius. Why? Celsius is very easy to figure out and the US has to be Fahrenheit. So let me tell you, like people talk about the weather a lot. So that's a lot of calculation that I'm always doing in my head because I still think Fahrenheit even after eight years. But the worst is like baking. You know, it's like I'm reading the U.S. recipes. I'm like, okay, so what is that going to be on my, you know, constantly? And I'm just like, why? Why does this have to be so different? And number 12, if you have not done a lot of traveling, you won't realize how good public transportation is in other places. It's like, I mean, they have public transportation in the U.S. and it can be quite dangerous in some cities. But like, it's just not as developed as, as part of like the way people, people just drive a lot of cars. 